Golfers, I bet you hate early extension. So early extension is when your pelvis moves towards the golf ball and you get your arms kind of trapped into your body. There are many different reasons why this happens. But what we're gonna talk about today is how we can fix early extension with your arm swing. How your arm swing can make your pelvis work better. And it might sound a bit weird and a bit funky that, but it's true. So in the ideal world, the pelvis should facilitate the arm swing, but if the arm swing is incorrect, it will push the pelvis into the wrong position. So we're tackling this through how the arms work to get the pelvis working correctly. So what we see with so many golfers is they swing down, the arms will kind of pull the chain down, trying to shallow the golf club and get the elbows spread. And when the elbows are spread like this, how we get to the golf ball is either by flicking the right hand at it excessively or thrusting the hips and raising the handle to create some kind of dynamic move. Sometimes it'll happen also because the arms will work out too much. And again, the right elbow gets into this kind of shape. And then from there, the shallowing action comes from the pelvis moving to the golf ball. Equally as bad as each other. What we want to try and do is drive the arms in a way, and the hands, in a way that pushes the pelvis back. Now, obviously, I'm relying here on you having a decent backswing. But what we want to do is feel like the hands move the pelvis and the arms move the pelvis and the elbow, the trail elbow gets forward and in front of your rib cage to allow the pelvis to stay where it is, then we rotate. Let's get into the how we do that. To help the demonstration, I've got a rod through my belt loops here. What we want to see really in the downswing is these arms kind of go forward and down with the chest staying closed. Now, if I get too turny and spinny, you'll see here my shaft and the arms can get trapped and then the early extension and the rising of the handle happens. So what I want to feel happens is the elbow gets down and forward and I almost try and start the downswing without moving my shoulders at all. So if I was here and said start my downswing, it's moving these arms fast and down and forward and that creates then the arms to be in front of the pelvis and the pelvis then moving back to facilitate the arms. That's exactly what we want to feel. This kind of down and forward arm action like this. Again, if I'm here trying to throw my arm down and forward without moving my shoulder, so trying to keep that shoulder exactly where it is and the arm go like that, that is what I'm trying to achieve. So the more we can feel that kind of sequence that we're at the top of the backswing, we're staying closed and feeling the arms go down and forward and we don't hit this with the trail elbow and we feel like the trail elbow feels like it's under this trail shoulder but the trail shoulder stays where it is and this elbow goes forward towards the ball line. The more we can do that, the better. And we want to exaggerate this as much as you can. And when we do that, that creates happiness. So the ways in which we can make this happen and encourage this to happen is by doing practice swings with this rod between our belt loops. And what I'd want you to do is again, just make some slow swings. by trying to feel that the arms are kind of starting that downswing, the hips and chest are kind of staying where they are. The only thing I would encourage you to do if you wanted to is move the hips a bit laterally. So we get this kind of what we call lateral separation. There is a recentering in terms of rotation, but again, I would want it to be totally unconscious. What we have and what we see with a lot of elite golfers is the rotation happens from here through the golf ball. Whereas what I see with a lot of poor golfers or poorer golfers is we get rotation early and then the rotation stops. And then through the hitting zone, there's very little rotation. So I really want the rotation to be in the right part of the swing. And the importance of having that rotation in the right part of the swing is it gives us a lot more club head control. When my body stops rotating, the speed and energy will all go to the hands. And the speed and energy goes to the hands that way you get this flicking action through the golf ball. So we increase the loft, we encourage the low point to be more behind the golf ball. So we get contact issues. And obviously when we do make good contact, we tend to have weaker shots. So it's really not great for us. So what we're really looking for is the sequence on paper would be hips, torso, then arms and hands. But when I see a lot of golfers, they get too much rotational move with this, which is why we don't get the sequence right. So I really want you to feel from the top of the swing, the arms and hips feel like they move almost at the same pace and the torso feels like it's slower. So when I'm talking about the hips as well, we're purely talking about lateral and no rotation. As I said, there will be some rotation. 
when the lead arm gets down to about parallel to the ground, these hips will be pretty square. So in the backswing, they're going to be closing, if you like, or rotating to this side. And in the downswing, they will be squaring, so there is rotation. I'm not saying there isn't. What I'm saying to you is we get too many golfers that get too twitchy and too fast with their hips early trying to rotate, trying to get what they feel is correct in the golf swing by rotating through the golf ball. Because what they'll see is your Rory McIlroy and golfers alike that are very open at contact. They are, but they're moving most of their rotation from the lead arm parallel to the lead arm parallel again in the through swing. That's where most of the rotation is happening. So what I want to do is one, do practice swings with this rod and then hit some balls. Let's do that now. So if I set up to the golf ball there, practice. Then I'm going to try and hit a golf ball, making no contact at all with that rod. Really good. So definitely I'm aware of it and you'll be aware of it too. So don't worry about that. Let's show you another drill. So the second drill I want you to do is what I call the pump drill. And again, we can still leave this here if we want to. So take your setup as normal, top the swing, pump the arms down and forward, pump the arms down and forward. And on number three, we'd hit the ball. Let's just do that. So one, two, and number three. It's a bit more broken down, but it'll certainly encourage you to make the move and the change depending on what you're used to. Let's show you how we can maybe take this to the golf course. So on the golf course, we want very much your natural swing to be in force, maybe with a, a conscious thought only. So the conscious thought only could be start the downswing more with the arms. So I'm in the back swing, I wound up, start with the arms. And the rehearsal can be very much that exaggeration. The other thing we can do as a practice swing, if we wanted to, is cross our feet over. That really means the arms are more dominant. Step out and swing through. So as a practice swing, that's good to do, but it looks quite funky on the course. So again, that can be one you do on the range. Then the course itself, let's try and start down with those arms. Hit it great. Got a touch too much draw on it for me, or hook if you like. It's finished, would be probably left edge of the green. Um, but definitely felt like my arms were more dominant and I tried to keep my shoulders, what I would feel is closed on the downswing. So trying to keep my back to target longer, something that Justin Rose talks about. I feel like the arms fire. That was the key concept for me. And if I was gonna go and play in the golf course, that's the concept I would use. And I might do some practice swings while the fellow golfers are teeing off my cross leg out the way where I can't be seen. So give them a go if you want to play better golf.